Hi everyone, my name is Shabrad Rakra and I'm the scientist wannabe. Today I'm starting a new playlist called 10 Scientific Discoveries and Inventions Throughout Time. The playlist will include 10 scientific discoveries or invention of a certain time period. Each video topic will be split into part 1 and part 2. As you may have already guessed, part 1 will include the first 5, and part 2 will include the following 5. For this video and the following video, we will be taking a look at 10 scientific discoveries and inventions of the Renaissance. Number 1. The Invention of the Microscope For most of the time that humanity has walked on this earth, the smallest thing anyone was able to see was as wide as the human hair. This changed in 1590 when young spectacle maker Zachary Jansen was credited with inventing the microscope. However, him being credited is highly controversial considering that Zachary Jansen was only 10 years old in 1590. Number 2. The Invention of the Telescope Space is the place that has made humanity curious of what there may be beyond our own planet. For thousands of years, space was studied by only what the naked eye offered. This was until 1608 when Dutch eyeglass maker Hans Lippershey became the first person to patent the telescope. Some say that Hans got the idea of making the telescope when he saw two children putting a concave and convex lens together to see a distant weather vane appear closer. The telescope has become one of humanity's most important invention. Number 3. Spontaneous Generation Being Proven Wrong Spontaneous generation is a theory of living organisms arising from non-living matter. An example of this is maggots forming on an exposed piece of meat after a couple of days. For millennia, spontaneous generation was the accepted way for how life formed. In 1668, Italian scientist Francesco Redi designed an experiment that tested spontaneous generation. He put three fresh pieces of meat into three separate jars. One jar was open, the second jar was covered with gauze, and the third jar was completely sealed. Days passed and Redi checked the jars. The open jar had maggots formed and the second and third did not. Reddy came to the conclusion that life would only form in the presence of other life. In this case, it would be the flies having access to the meat in the first jar and laying their eggs. Number 4. Newton's Laws of Motion Today, Newton's Laws of Motion explain all movement. This includes simple forces such as resting your phone on a table to how the movement of air can make an airplane fly. In 1686, Sir Isaac Newton presented his three laws of motion and mathematical principles of natural philosophy. The first law stated that an object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless acted on by an external force. This law explains why rogue planets or space rocks will continue on non-stop unless acted on by a force such as gravitational force or an impact on another object. The second law states how velocity of an object can change when subjected by an external force. This law is defined by mass multiplied by velocity per change in time. This can also be expressed as force equals mass multiplied by acceleration. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite force acting on it. For example, if we put a 2 kilogram textbook on a flat table, the book will have a downwards force. We can calculate this force by using the formula F equals MA from Newton's second law. Mass would be 2 kilograms, and the acceleration would be the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. The book's downward force would then be 19.62 newtons. Now because the book is not moving and it is on a flat table, there is an opposite force that is acting on the book which holds the book up. This force would be the same force as gravity in the specific situation because we are dealing with a flat table and no movement. However, this would be an upward force acting on the book. This force is called normal force. It's kind of confusing to wrap your head around at first, but once you get it, it's not too hard. Number 5. The Cell Theory in the early 1660s, 26-year-old Englishman Robert Cook took, took the assignment of joining the Royal Society for Scientists. King Charles was the one who funded this, and he only asked scientists to study insects under a microscope. However, Hook went above and beyond and looked at other materials such as cloth and metals. The amazing discovery came when he observed a slice of cork under a microscope with a 50 times magnification. He saw many empty spaces that were surrounded by walls. He calculated that there are 1.259 billion cells in one cubic inch of cork. With scientific advancements, we now know that it was dead plant cells that Hooke was observing. The walls that Hooke described are the cell walls of the plant cells. 
At the time that the cell was discovered, it was not called a cell, but it was Robert Hooke who coined the term cell to describe these empty compartments. Thank you for watching and I hope you all enjoyed. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Tune in on June 1st, 2017 for part 2 of 10 scientific discoveries and inventions of the Renaissance. And remember, everything is science.